Welcome everyone to the Kendall Report, where I share my 43 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. I'm here to cut through all the financial noise, giving you the clarity that you're going to need to be profitable in the market. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. So let's get into tonight's video. Welcome everyone. In the channel going forward, I'm going to be doing a weekly video that will be released, giving you per some perspective of exactly what we're going to be looking at and how we're going to be reacting. So it'll be a general video for the entire week. Let's get into tonight's video. So before I get into some of the details and things I want to talk about, let's go through some of the economics that I think are important that we're going to have to really play close attention to this week. We get consumer confidence on Tuesday. Wednesday, we get the JOLTS report, which I believe is going to be down again, which suggests that the job market is actually even drying up or starting to get worse than what it was, because we did have around 11 million plus jobs, and now we're down to 9.59. I expect that number to continue to go down, and the Fed wants to see that go down. I'll discuss that here in a few minutes. On the Thursday, we have, because of this shortened week, we have ADP looking at about 200, and, I think 240 jobs coming out for ADP. We also have claims coming out as well. That will be Thursday on, that's expected to be 237. And the continuing claims are at 1.79 million. And I suspect all of these numbers are going to continue to come down. So there's going to be a bit of a conflict. If we do see the jolts number come down, I still believe the claims and the continuing claims are going to improve as we go forward. I don't see this weakening. So the whole concept of a recession coming and all of the metrics that folks are talking about are not going to come into fruition. On Friday, then we have employment numbers coming out. 210,000 jobs expected, unemployment expected to be unchanged at 3.5. Last month, it came in better. This number just doesn't want to move up. If we stay unchanged, we're going to continue to see the markets just continue in the same path that we've been on. Now, there's some positive trends that have shown up after the debt ceiling. I'll go through all of the scenarios here in a minute. But for sure, you're not going to see any recessionary numbers. So let's get into talking about some of the macro stuff that is coming around all this. And ultimately, we're, I believe on June 13th and 14th is the next Fed meeting. I'm still expecting for them to raise 0.25, again, putting us up to five and a quarter to five and a half. Those of you who watched the channel for a while know that my expectations have been the terminal rate to be around five and a half. I think they probably finish there and maybe they pause at least after the June meeting. We'll see what kind of numbers we get, though. If they claim that they're data driven, then we're going to see that data drive the actions. And I still don't think we're going to get any of these numbers to be negative enough for them to pause, especially as we see what type of inflation numbers come out. We did see a stickiness in Europe as well in the UK. And then here in our most recent PCE report, there's definitely some stickiness to this inflation. It's not going away very easily. So let's talk a little bit more about what's the main action that we've been focused in on in the last couple of weeks. I told you that the debt ceiling was a, a no deal, a no big deal. And I continue to believe that what we've seen now is the markets are now back at the 4,200 level. We saw a decent bid as there's some deal that supposedly has been negotiated. Nothing's been passed. There's still a couple of little glitches that could happen in here. These guys are pretty in, uh, consistent at screwing things up. So just know that is out there as well. So we could still get some volatility around this event. But in the end, as I told you before, they're going to solve it. We're going to go forward. Now, this video I, I was talking about in the headline, can we hit, reach 4,300? And I believe we are going to see a number of 
positive events that are going to keep driving the markets higher. We've been in the sideways range. We've talked about it. The high was 43.17, the low 35.02, going back to October, midpoints around 39.14, roughly. And here we are trading back at the upper end, 4,200. I think we challenged that 4,300 level sometime in the next couple of weeks. And it could get fairly explosive if some of the rhetoric that starts to come around these debt ceiling numbers really start to mature a little bit and folks start to go, okay, there's no problem there. We're going to get employment numbers and everything's going to end up looking very positive. I don't see any negative numbers here. And I am going to cover just briefly a couple technicals here that I believe that are, will be worth watching. I'll, I will cover the weekly charts for both the S&P and NASDAQ, and we'll focus on those as we go forward. In next week's video, I will go through a long-term outlook going from a bottom-up viewpoint from daily, weekly, and monthly, and including the quarterly as we come in to the final month of this quarter. So uh, one of the other things that I will discuss here in a minute, we'll go through the database on a weekly level just to show you exactly where we are. And I'll discuss a little bit of activity that's going on in the dailies. Let's go ahead and get into the database and a brief overview of the technicals. Let's review the weekly database. We dropped to 53.59. We were roughly about 56% last week. We had 1,447 sell signals and 566 buys. So a slight negative rotation. You can see here that both the 1.2 model and 3.2 model were negative, but we're still well above that 42% level that is necessary. So we're not seeing that much negative rotation here that is indicating a major switch in the trends. We look at some of the other things here on this page. The average days that are held here, 205, looking at the average profit is around 31%. Current duration fulfilled is only 0.22. So about 22% of the duration has been fulfilled. We're 46 days into a 205-day holding period. So my expectation is that we have at least, we normally don't get to a full level, meaning that we don't get to a 70 or 80 or 100 percent of this move. We get about into around 70 to 75 percent of that should be experienced, which means that there is still approximately 110 to 150 days looking forward. Now, one of the things that can happen is we can see a rotation and those numbers can be extended and we could end up going into well into the end of the year before we even start to get some serious attrition and dropping below potentially 42%. A quick review of the S&P 500 futures for the weekly suggests that we have a decent upslope here on the angle of attack. We're still at PPM1 is at 0.53, PPM2, 0.35, 0.20 on PPM3. So everything is still very much in an upward trend. And I don't see this changing, even though we're looking at the augos are suggesting that we're going to cross the second, first and second derivative coming into the June, the first of June. So about a week from now, we are looking like we are going to cross that, which suggests that that number could be challenged. Right now it's at 41.70, that's major support. The last trade right now is 42.21, and we have Fibonacci targets right now, 42.59 is a minimum, but there's another fine tuning of a projection at 42.65 to 42.91. And the next numbers above that here on the weekly, 44.19 and 45. 18. These are these numbers where my cursor is at the moment. So this will be 
the upward targets, it looks like we're probably going to try to move toward that. But about two weeks from now is going to be very critical that we hold some of these moving averages here. And you can see that the projected moving averages still have a reasonable angle of attack. Even though they're rounding off, those numbers are going to maintain as major support right around 4,200. So it's very possible now that we've gotten back above this 4,200 number that we're going to remain over the next couple of weeks. We'll set up some possibilities for the markets to move much higher in the pattern. Before I move on to the NASDAQ, let's take a look at the weekly market grid numbers, up 43. So we've actually been above that. And so we're looking at right now, 42.59 is R2, which is also a Fibonacci target. And then we've got 42.80, and then 43.05 gets to be RXT on a weekly. On the downside, 41.91 is likely to be around the low of the week if we have any negative numbers. So I don't think we see that. But S1, R2 is men, and most likely we could see an R3, which would print us up to 42.83. So this week is going to be very interesting. Next, we'll take a look at the NASDAQ. As I've been talking about, the angle of attack is huge. So this is the trend of the 10 simple, the 21 simple moving average, and the 40. You can see all three of them are up substantially. And these are very sustainable numbers right now, PPM1, at a 1.11, this is over four times the minimum trend mode that we're in. PPM2 is 1.22, PPM3 is 0.36. So all three of these moving averages are in trend mode, which tells you right now that the 10 period moving average only has about a 15% probability that the market would decline below that. And that number is substantially lower at 13,535. We did see a number two weeks ago where we got very close to this number where we, the, the low of, of two weeks ago was at 13,350 and we got to the 13,217 was the 10 period moving average. So that's pretty close. I had discussed the possibility of getting down there. We got a bounce and off of that support and now we're moving up now we do have two fibonacci targets here that are that are live and those are at we've already exceeded the 14,005 14,844 15,363 and this is on a weekly basis so we could continue along this line for several weeks thank you so much folks for watching the video i do want to remind you that you should really take a look at our indicators. They're at www.kendallreport.com slash indicators. You will be able to find out exactly how to get access to them. We have a new suite coming out. And if you buy this suite, you will get a deep discount on the new release. And we're continuing to expand our tools that you're able to use. So if you like what you've seen in this video today, go check that out. I look forward to having more content out to you very soon. Thanks for watching.